Emmanuel begins with the protagonist experiencing a blackout. She felt alcohol running through her body instead of blood and couldn't breathe well, causing her to fear the incoming death. Upon waking up in an unfamiliar, lavish place, she questions if it's a dream due to her drunkenness. Her body feels unresponsive, and suddenly, a voice refers to her as my lady. A man's voice asks for confirmation if she's alive, and once he gets it, his eyes turn cold. He mentions her survival from a small dose of poison is not a big deal and criticizes her attempt to stand out. Cherished noble ladies enter the palace and hope for the emperor's love. However, as time passes, their expectations crumble, causing them to be immensely disappointed. Their last choice is the same every time. They take their bodies hostage and test their luck at the crossroads of life and death. The protagonist feels too dizzy to hear anything. Her head throbbed badly, and she was unable to open her eyes. The man speaks again, wondering why she would try to attract his majesty's attention this way. He straightforwardly tells her that his majesty has no interest in her. Most ladies die after taking poison, but there are some instances when they survive. Lady Lucia was one of them, but with an unchanging reality, they took poison again. The man suggests Lucia try becoming a different person this time around. The protagonist wonders who the annoying man is. She wanted to check, but her body was unable to move. As she hears the man's name as Chief Constable, she becomes shocked. The scene switches to the protagonist looking out the window. She realizes this isn't a dream. Instead, she has woken up in a different world and, most importantly, in a different body. As a maid asks her to rest since the poison hasn't fully healed her body, she realizes the body's owner took the poison. Everything seemed strange to her. But the strangest thing for her was getting used to her appearance. The lady she is now has a unique hair color, even the color of her eyes, making her wonder whether people are really born with such a color. She can't believe an adorable child like Lucia was almost sold off in the flesh. She wasn't completely sure why Lucia committed suicide, but she felt sorry for her. What could have happened to the original owner of this body? She knew she had to gain information quickly. She asks for her belongings, which she uses often, from the maid, who then brings her Lucia's journal. She flips the pages and realizes that it wasn't suicide. She didn't die because of the mistake she made, as she was putting on an act to grab the emperor's attention. Lucia longed for a man with no greed for power and someone who'd cherish her with love. Although she was the daughter of a countryside feudal lord, she didn't have an ounce of interest in the throne. She was in the palace because of her father's oppression who had ordered her to seduce his majesty with her beauty. She was a presence with the resemblance not of an empress but rather of an ornamental bird. She flips through more pages and reads a warning that states, be careful of the black rose that floats on the water's surface. This makes her wonder what it could mean. The scene shifts to the chief constable interrogating a man for failing to deal with the palace's expenses. He notices Lucia walking past him. The man informs him that she must be on her way to attend tea time with the other ladies and reveals that most of the money has been spent on her tea time dresses and accessories. The tea time isn't just for socializing but also because his majesty made it mandatory and they hope he might come someday. The chief constable scoffs and asks if there has been a lady from the Rose Palace who slept a night with the emperor. Previously, the protagonist, or the present Lucia, was adorned with jewels and dressed for tea time. She is then led to the tea hall. She recalls that in Lucia's diary, she said she was scared of the women in Rose Palace, making her wonder what kind of women they were. She takes her seat among the ladies and begins to drink. Soon, Isla approaches her and begins to confess about how she wants to be entrusted to his majesty's care. Hearing her made Lucia think that she was watching an old play. Just then, another woman approaches her and expresses her concern for her sickness in a mocking manner, saying she drank poison to get his majesty's attention. They all begin to ask more questions, but Lucia shrugs them off, saying she doesn't remember anything. She knew she needed to be careful with her words since she still didn't know who tried to kill Lucia. Feeling uncomfortable, she begins to leave. However, her cup falls to the floor and smashes into pieces. That night, she sat on the stairs, watching the beautiful scenery. The chief constable approaches her and asks what she is doing here, to which she says she's only sitting for a moment. His silence makes her wonder if she should have been more casual with him and how Lucia behaved toward him. He asks why her dress is stained, to which she says she spilled tea. The constable then remarks that the relationship between predator and prey doesn't exist just with animals. It applies to humans too. Today, it was to the extent of spilling tea on clothes, but she doesn't know what they'll do next time. He sighs and then advises her to become stronger. She asks if there's anything else he wants to say, making him sigh again. Lucia gets annoyed with his constant sighing but is cut off from her thoughts as the constable approaches her closer, commenting that she hasn't changed a bit. 
She realizes she has heard his voice before and decides to take this opportunity to change something about herself. Realizing he's the guy from before, she asks him to stop. She reveals she died and came back to life as another person, and she asks if that isn't reason enough to meet the Emperor. The man sighs while Lucia continues and asks if the Emperor has ever met a woman who became someone else. She knew she needed to find a way to return to her original body and wondered whether the Emperor might be able to help her. The constable replies that the emperor is no sage and doesn't know everything. None of the other women have ever come back as someone else. Even those who were lucky enough to survive ended up killing themselves. He apologizes, saying he can't give her the answer she wants, and leaves. Lucia returns to her room, tired. She mutters, Lord Chamberlain, exciting her maids. A maid blushes, saying he grows more handsome by the day and revealing that he came to check on Lucia when she was unconscious. Lucia asks her to reveal everything about him. The maid then informs her that he's tall with broad shoulders and a narrow torso, and looks good in anything. She continues praising his face, making Lucia cringe, and she wonders if they are talking about the same guy since he wasn't all that. But she knows he might look more attractive to her since she likes him. The maid also reveals that the Emperor is reclusive, and Lord Chamberlain acts as his eyes and ears. People even say that Lord Chamberlain will become the future Emperor since his black hair is a trait of the Imperial family. But what's unusual is that he only comes whenever a lady succumbs to poison or overcomes it. As Lucia eats her meal, she ponders how strange the whole ordeal is. The Emperor never shows himself, so Lord Chamberlain takes care of everything for him. Then there are the ladies of the Rose Palace who poison themselves. She then wonders if Lord Chamberlain should really be advising the Lady of the Rose Palace. The scene shifts to Lord Chamberlain discussing the palace's increased budget with the steward. He proposes to cut the budget, but the steward applies logic and states that the ladies are all of noble birth, so naturally the cost is immense. He advises that the emperor must marry in order to solve the issue. Lord Chamberlain then realizes that it's been a while since any of the ladies tried to drink poison. The steward replies that they must have given up since the emperor doesn't bat an eye. He expresses his concern for Lady Lucia, as she hasn't left her chambers for some time and isn't eating well either. His words made Lord Chamberlain wonder if he knew more than he was letting on. The steward reveals that before she collapsed, she used to smile and talk all the time. But now, she doesn't even recognize him since she's suffering from memory loss. Lord Chamberlain remarks that he seems to care for someone who isn't even his wife. But the steward replies that there's an aura of mystery around her, and he accidentally slips that this might be why the other ladies poisoned Lady Lucia. That night, Lord Chamberlain plucks a rose, commenting that the thorns beneath the petals resemble the ladies of the Rose Palace. He remembers Lucia's words and smiles. He decides to congratulate her, as she managed to get the attention she was after. If she's hiding what happened to her before she took poison while pretending to be someone else, then she might give him the answer. And then no one will have to die anymore. He looks towards a balcony and realizes that Lucia jumped after climbing through the window. He sprints towards a nearby tree, wondering what she's thinking. He grabs onto a branch, saying she can't die. Meanwhile, Lucia stares at him in confusion and asks what he's doing in that tree. Annoyed, he asks the same question from her, to which she laughs and says she couldn't sleep. It turns out that while having a glass of wine, her clothes got stuck, making him think she committed suicide. She invites him for a drink, and he accepts. While Lord Chamberlain wonders how she ended up drinking poison, Lucia wants him to leave so she can eat peacefully. She gives in and begins to eat wholeheartedly, surprising Lord Chamberlain. He wonders if she didn't study court etiquette before coming to the palace. He remembers the steward's words about Lucia and thinks how it'd be a pity if she were poisoned because of her beauty, although there's nothing beautiful about her right now. But what surprised him was that the tight feeling in his chest had disappeared. He is cut off from his thoughts as Lucia suggests raising a toast, and so they do. He asks why she's dining here, to which she confesses that seeing the moon helps her calm down and think better. He had thought of Lucia as any other lady of the Rose Palace, but his judgment is proven wrong as he continues talking to her. The scene shifts to the Emperor ordering the ladies to start earning their keep in order to reduce the palace's budget. Soon enough, the steward is informed that the grumpy Lord Chamberlain who sticks his nose in everyone's business is none other than the Emperor. He argues that he heard the Emperor was a fierce warrior who spent years in battle. He also argues that the Emperor is said to have black hair that glimmers with gold as compared to Lord Chamberlain's plain black hair. The head steward argues that he might not be able to change his hair color, but he can hide the way it shines. The steward further says he drinks blood instead of wine and dines on human flesh, which he finds hard to believe. 
but the head asks him to not believe it and rather do as he tells him to. He then smiles, saying he was lying, confusing him even more. The head then asks how many ladies are staying in the Rose Palace. The steward responds that there were originally 78, but there are only a handful now. He then asks why the emperor is pretending to be Lord Chamberlain after all. As the story goes, a devil returned from battle, covered in blood, only to kill his own family so that he might ascend the throne. The scene shifts to Lucia suggesting that she play a game with her maid, Serena, called Odd Questions. A person asks some odd questions of the other, and all they have to do is answer with a straight face. If one runs out of questions, they lose, but if the other can't keep a straight face, they lose. Lucia starts first and asks what the purpose of the Rose Palace is. Serena replies that the court officials insist that his majesty must take a queen to establish his bloodline. They brought it up every day for two years until the emperor finally relented. At first, there were only two ladies, but more and more began to arrive, and now they have taken over the palace. Lucia then asks why the emperor doesn't show himself, to which the maid reveals that he was originally second in line to the throne. While fighting for succession, he killed his older brother and became the emperor. When rumors spread that he killed the king and queen too, opposition arose. After that, he entered the palace and was never seen again. Lucia then asks a few more questions, including about Lord Chamberlain. Wanting to talk to him about skipping tea time, she decides to look for him. However, he was nowhere to be found, and so she jokes about drinking some poison. She then asks Serena how to leave the Rose Palace, making her stutter. Lucia reveals that she just wants to get out and see some flowers for a change. Serena sighs and says she can go out whenever she gets permission. Later, Serena enters with several other maids, carrying various kinds of flowers with them. Serena reveals it's because of her request, and behind them all, Lord Chamberlain approaches Lucia, saying he helped her servants pick flowers too. It was strange to hear that he made few or no appearances. However, as she recalls her encounters with him, she realizes she has already seen him numerous times. As they sat down, Lord Chamberlain read out a scroll to her that had been sent to other ladies as well. But he came to deliver the message to her in person. As he talked boringly, Lucia yawned sleepily. But her eyes widen as he states that every lady in the Rose Palace must use her talents to benefit the Empire. This makes her recall her talk with Lord Chamberlain that night. She had told him that there was nothing to do for her except for the same old day spent dressing up, drinking tea, and gossiping. He reveals that he told the Emperor what she said and advises her to remain covert since the other ladies won't like knowing she was the one behind this idea. He then takes his leave, leaving her to make a decision. Meanwhile, a man approaches the Emperor and insists on being taken under his wing. He reminds him that even though he was an enemy knight, he saved his life, and if he hadn't killed his brother, someone else would be sitting on that throne. This angers the Emperor, and he asks if he has any idea how many of his men he slaughtered. The man smirks and bluntly says he lost count, but the Emperor agrees, allowing him to stay at the Rose Palace. The man smiles and protests that, though he has a pretty face, dressing him up as a woman is too much. He gets interrupted as the head steward drags him away. As he leads him away, he advises the man to watch what he says in front of his majesty. The man, Jace, introduces himself and asks if he would look good in a dress. He then asks if it's true that a beautiful woman has come to live in the palace. The steward sighs, knowing it is true. It seemed peculiar to him that this man seemed confident and relaxed in front of the emperor, unlike the others with their heads down and quivering but he does question his sanity. Meanwhile, Felix asks Lucia about her decision, but she replies that she isn't sure yet what she can do. She asks him what the other ladies have decided on, to which he informs her that most have settled on making clothes and jewelry, but Lucia wasn't good at any of them. She finds him dealing with some documents and asks what they are. Felix explains that he's been tasked with recording the palace's budget and reporting it to Lord Chamberlain each month. He tries to make it as straightforward as possible, but he makes him rewrite it again. He apologizes for venting his frustration to her, but for Lucia, it was an idea. She explains that it'd be much easier if he used charts or pictures, and so Felix accepts her help. Meanwhile, Lord Chamberlain asks his brother why he doesn't want Count Jarnus to teach him. Alvis hesitatingly reveals that the Count is a coward for making him take classes on the day of his mother's memorial ceremony but the Lord reveals that it was he who ordered him to. Although Alvis doesn't remember what his mother looks like, he still wants to attend her memorial. He protests to Lord Chamberlain about letting him go but to no avail. In the meantime, Lucia is getting ready for her bath. As she inspects a petal and crushes it with her teeth, Lord Chamberlain abruptly enters her room. 
She clarified that she wasn't trying to eat it. Serena agrees and bluntly remarks that she was chewing it to make herself more attractive, flustering Lucia. Lord Chamberlain smiles and bursts into laughter, flustering Lucia even more. He is about to joke about her huge appetite, but Lucia stops him. She makes Serena go away and then reveals to him that since the ladies of the Rose Palace aren't allowed to dine with other men, it isn't okay to talk about their meal from that night. He agrees to keep their dining a secret, mostly because he prefers not to get close to any of the women in the palace. He is well aware of those who want to seize the throne by sending their daughters here. Every one of these women is an empty-headed fool who spends her days playing dress-up, and he knows that Lucia is no different. He only came here to find the truth about food poisoning. Nothing more, nothing less. He then announces his departure and begins to walk away. He abruptly halts and asks Lucia to call him Eric. Her little acknowledgement makes him wonder whether his name is too old-fashioned. He is cut off from his thoughts as he bumps into Felix. He smiles and beckons a scared Felix towards him. He takes the budget report immediately and sees that the expenses show no signs of dropping. And it seems these women enjoy the mere act of spending money. He is taken aback to see drawings, which Felix explains to him and reveals that it was Lucia who taught him about them. Eric thinks this might be the way for Lucia to earn her keep. He then asks Felix if his name is too old-fashioned, which he denies, saying his name is glorious. Eric walks away, wondering why she didn't react then. That night, a shadow lurked in the basement, demanding a new body since he could do nothing in this state. An unidentified man replies that the moonlight charged with the energy of a thousand days did enter an uninhabited body, but it appears another soul entered it before him. As the shadow desperately scratches its skin, he reveals he's being driven mad by this flesh, and the hair he stuck on the scalp is inches from falling off. He thought the time had finally come for his revenge, but the unidentified man asks him to be patient until the moon has recharged itself anew. But there is another way. The soul that now holds the energy hasn't yet fully become one with its new body, and if that soul is stabbed in the heart, the body might be his to take. The shadow then snickers, saying he must kill Eric, his brother, who killed him. The next day, Lucia prepares herself to act like a nobleman's daughter. As she takes a walk, she bumps into a knight towering above her. The knight clarifies that it's his first day as a palace guard and asks for the east gate. Wanting to act like an aristocrat, she says confusing words to the guard and begins walking away. She wonders if she should have sternly threatened to get him beheaded if he spoke again. On the other hand, Jace questions Lucia's insanity. Meanwhile, Eric announces to Alvis that one of the ladies will tutor him from now on, despite his objections. For Alvis, those greedy cows didn't seem capable enough to teach him, and he wonders why his brother doesn't meet those women if he says they're all qualified to become empresses. He realizes that it must be because he's trying to get leverage on the nobility by holding their daughters hostage. Knowing he still has a week to meet his tutor, Lucia, he plots to get her kicked out and laughs evilly at his own brilliant plan. As he begins to enter the Rose Palace, Halo stops him, but to no avail. He approaches Lucia, calling her a pretty doll but declaring her unfit to be his teacher. Judging by the way he's acting, Lucia wonders whether he's the Emperor's son. She wonders if she's supposed to teach this kid. Alvis continues calling her a doll and says he has nothing to learn from someone who tried to poison herself. He then asks a shocked Lucia to say she can't be his teacher. To his surprise, Lucia agrees without hesitation, politely saying she doesn't feel comfortable teaching someone and asking him to find someone in charge. He soon returns and finds Lucia playing a game with Serena. He also decides to give it a try, and later, he is found to be enjoying himself. As a penalty for losing, Alvis agrees to have the chief cook up a grand meal for all the servants. Meanwhile, Halo wonders what's taking him so long but gets interrupted by Eric's arrival. Alvis calls Halo inside, who then leaves the room gloomily, making Eric wonder what's wrong. It turns out that Alvis keeps losing to Lucia. Lucia pats his head and agrees to teach him how to win. Just then, Eric calls for him and asks him to go back, but Alvis doesn't want to. Lucia invites Eric to try. Serena explains the rules, they take turns counting, and one can say up to three numbers at a time. But whoever says 31 loses. Lucia knew all she had to do to win was say 30. The first time she goes, she counts to two and then makes sure her opponent counts four numbers per turn. But her trick soon fails as Eric begins first and counts to two, making her wonder how he could be good at everything. As Eric and Alvis leave, Eric teases him for pouting like a child while he, the Emperor, won the game. At the next tea time, Swan complains about working along with dressing up for the Emperor. She tells her she chose cooking and mocks Lucia for being able to do nothing. Later, Lucia got an official letter of appointment as Prince Alvis's teacher. She knew she had no choice but to accept it. 
Just then, Alvis enters her room, excited to have cracked the code as to why she played that game. He declares that she's like the other ladies, who just humor him. He then reminds her that if she lays a hand on a member of the Imperial family without permission, she'll be beheaded. She is taken aback and realizes what she did. But to her surprise, Alvis asks her to do it again, which she does. Alvis begins to ponder and leaves after reaching a conclusion and promising to behave the next time they meet. Lucia sighs, wondering what to teach him. She decides to go to the library. She takes a library pass from Eric, who tells her that it grants her permission to use the first three floors, as the rest are for the Imperial family. He then asks if she has thought of her penalty yet, to which she says she doesn't have much to offer. He then asks her to show him what's inside her. Lucia gets the wrong idea and gets terrified. Realizing what she understood, Eric clarifies that what he meant was to show him the truth inside her heart. She tells him she doesn't remember anything and needs time. Eric acknowledges this and leaves. A guard is called to escort Lucia to the library and introduces himself as Jace. She soon enters the library and is amazed to see tons of books inside. She realizes she's been slacking this whole time, as learning about this place should have been her priority. It's been three days now since Lucia was at the library, making the maids worry about her. They inform Lord Chamberlain, who came to see Lucia, but when they inform him where she has been this whole time, he becomes surprised. They ask him to check on her since they aren't allowed to go in. However, he rudely leaves. That night, Lucia begins to read a registry of titles, including those of angels, demons, and wizards. This makes her wonder whether she should read a fantasy novel, plus the titles are all limited. She reads, The wife shares in the power of her husband. Only the emperor's sons may inherit the throne. This makes her realize why everyone's scrambling to marry the emperor. Furthermore, demons can enter the human world by making deals, and oracles can stop only a few. She gets tired from the boring passage and yawns. She gets alert as someone remarks that a flower only needs to look beautiful, and asks what she's doing in the library. She replies that flowers need conditions to bloom easily, and therefore, she has to do her best at the assigned task. The voice soon disappeared, making her wonder who it was. She decides to leave and begins to put the books back on the shelves, however, to her shock, the shelf starts to fall. But before it could hit her, Eric shielded her from the impact. Unaware of who it is, Lucia asks him to let go, but he says if she sees his face, that'll be the end of her. Thinking it's the Emperor, she retaliates. However, he soon disappears as the guards approach Lucia. On the other hand, Eric blushes at the thought of her. He gets interrupted as two knights approach him, informing him that an ogre attacked the castle gates. His eyes widen as they further inform him that it seems to be heading for the Rose Palace. The news had spread to Lucia as well, who hoped for everyone's safety. It turns out that another ogre was found lurking near the Rose Palace's outer gate, making Eric wonder if someone summoned it. The knights ask what to tell the ladies about it, but he says it's not his concern. However, Lucia comes to his mind, and he says maybe it does. He orders them to call the theatrical troupe and have them perform for the ladies. He sighs, wondering why he can't stop thinking about her and wondering if her scent must have intoxicated his heart. Meanwhile, Lucia also wasn't able to get the mysterious man out of her head. She is informed about the theatrical troupe and notices how obsessed girls in this world are with romance, just like in her world. She is soon dressed up and leaves for the central garden. All eyes were set on Lucia, who looked too elegant, making them envy her. Swan approaches Eric, asking him to sit with them since he's in charge. Eric points out that there are no empty seats, to which she glances at the ladies, saying one of them might be gracious enough to offer theirs, but no one replies. Eric walks toward Lucia, ignoring Swan, and asks if the stage is visible to her. He then sits with her. Swan approaches him again, but he arrogantly refuses her, making her furious. Meanwhile, Isla begins to call for Lucia, but Swan orders her to come to her. The performance soon begins, involving the romance between a prince and a common girl. Lucia and Eric begin to chat, and she introduces apple wine to him, which fascinates him a lot. And when Eric asks if she seems to like books, an image of that night reappears in her mind. Eric reminds Lucia that her first lesson with Alvis is tomorrow and asks if she has decided what to teach him. Lucia replies that she might start with something basic since it's their first meeting. Later, Eric asks for news on the ogre front. He is informed that the damage from the attack has been repaired. He asks Jace if killing an ogre isn't child's play for him, to which he replies that he can't draw attention by killing it single-handedly. However, they weren't able to find where it came from but it was certain it was targeting the Rose Palace. Jace then teases him for playing around the palace as Lord Chamberlain. Eric ignores him and throws a sack of coins at him, ordering him to buy apple wine for him. 
He walks out, realizing the class must have started. Lucia seemed like a peculiar girl to him. She eats and drinks alone in the middle of the night, and while everyone else drinks tea, only she chooses wine. He smiles, deciding to check on them. Meanwhile, Lucia asks his student what he needs to learn, to which Alvis brings out craft tools, saying he wants to make flowers. However, he has trouble doing that. Lucia takes the paper from him and crumbles it. She then asks him to watch closely, and she turns the paper into a beautiful flower, impressing Alvis. Alvis asks Lucia to imagine the emperor who never missed his parents. Lucia coughs awkwardly and asks him to imagine what it would look like, but Alvis is unable to do that. Seeing his sad expression, Lucia changes the topic, and they get back to making flowers. Eric peeks through the door and sees his brother goofing around with Lucia, making him smile fondly. Later, Lucia finds that all the roses are about to be removed. Knowing it would be a waste, she ordered all of them to be sent to her room. Jace helps her do that, recalling Eric's request to look out for her. Meanwhile, Eric inspects the things the ladies made and is impressed, knowing they can sell them to cover the palace's expenses. Halo points to the food that Swan made as well. He asks the knights to taste it as well. Thinking about how Eric has found something to his liking, Halo tastes the food as well but pukes it out. Later, Romeo meets his sister who informs him of her plans to meet her friend Isla at the palace. Back at the palace, Lucia chats with Isla and finds Isla trying to copy whatever she does to end up being the empress. Eric approaches her and informs her of her maid falling in the mud and being harassed by another maid. Swan gossips with the other ladies about how Lord Chamberlain and Lucia might be fooling around. Seeing him concerned about a servant, she remarks that he seems to be quite thoughtful of her. Eric glares at her coldly and says he intends to do the same thing to the servant who harassed her. He then leads Lucia away, who gloomily questions whether it was because of her lack of power that Spooky fell in the mud. She realizes that Lord Chamberlain isn't afraid to speak his mind and isn't afraid of Swan. She decides to pull herself together to take care of her people. Eric advises her to stay strong, as all ladies are equal here. As a thank you, Lucia gifts him a rose drink. Eric realizes this is what she did with all those roses and notices how much she loves drinking. Grand Duke Bahamut arrives to meet him. He is a greedy old man who sent his granddaughter to live in the palace. He requests that Eric grant the ladies of the royal palace a day of freedom, but Eric asks him to let her granddaughter leave if she wants to. He sighs and announces holding a hunting tournament. When the duke leaves, Eric begins to feel drowsy from the drink, but he noticed how his headache was gone. Roses express passion and desire, their subtle scent encourages people to open up. He soon falls asleep, and Halo stops the next visitor from meeting him politely. However, Trudy still manages to take a look at the handsome man sleeping and is stunned. Later, Eric walks through the hall and bumps into Swan. She presents him with a gift as an apology for the tea time incident. Meanwhile, Lucia makes herself adamant that this world is her reality now, and she must protect her people as well as herself. She gets interrupted as Eric approaches her and announces that Swan's grandfather is holding a hunting tournament. However, Lucia didn't want to join one. He acknowledges it and thanks her for the drink. She explains how she's making more recipes from the rose, but its scent overpowers everything. She then presents her apple rose pie to him, which he delightfully eats. As she begins to cut another slice for him, she loses her balance and begins to fall. But Eric catches her and steadies her back up. Lucia tries to hide her blushing face, sensing deja vu. They get interrupted as Serena dashes towards them. Eric scolds her for making Lucia wear a long dress, but Lucia tells him it's fine. Just then, Isla enters and points out how red Lucia's face is. She says she read that when a woman thinks of a man she likes, her face turns red. This makes Lucia more flustered, and she turns to see Eric but finds him gone. Isla further reveals that she volunteered to participate on her behalf, making her gloomy. On the other hand, Romeo notices how lost his sister looks. Upon asking, she reveals to him that she went to the palace to meet the emperor. She then expresses her wish to enter the Rose Palace, wanting to marry him. Meanwhile, Eric is busy wondering who Lucia likes to be blushing at that time. He pushes the thought aside and asks for Duke Bahamut's whereabouts. He is informed that the Duke visited the treasury before leaving, and it seems he took the Lupendon necklace. He gives orders to double the security at the Rose Palace and keep Swan under surveillance. Meanwhile, Lucia watches Isla excitedly fire bows. She decides to stop, knowing archery isn't for her and leaves. She bumps into a sleeping Jace. He soon wakes up from the commotion, and Lucia gifts him a basket to thank him for the roses. On the other hand, Swan reveals to the ladies that bad luck comes to those who wear the Lupendon necklace and that it's meant for Lucia. She has planned to make every lady wear necklaces during the hunt so no one would suspect a thing. 
Also, she gave Lord Chamberlain an identical one, and so Lucia is presented with the necklace, but Lucia refuses to wear it. She asks Spooky to ask around if others have won too, for safety reasons. Whatever Swan is planning, Lucia has no intention of going along with it. It turns out they did, and so Lucia wears it. Swan notices her wearing one from a distance and smirks. As the carriage set off, Lucia felt sicker with every passing second. She suspects it's the necklace. As they arrive, her vision begins to blur, and she decides not to participate in the hunt anymore. She walks away, staggering, while Swan arrogantly watches. Lucia was frustrated by the pain and decided to stop. His body and head were going in different directions. All these words were a voice telling her. She screams for it to quit whining and get out already. And so it laughs, and the necklace flies away from Lucia's neck, shining brightly. It turns into a tiger and begins to attack her. However, the tiger stops and asks if she is trying to get herself killed. The tiger seemed confused as it inspected her and asked why her soul and body didn't match. Before they can speak further, the soldiers begin to approach them. The creature transforms into a baby cat, leaving Lucia awestruck. Eric Wardley approaches her after hearing she is ill, but he finds her petting a cute cat. She pleads to have it for a while, and Eric has no choice but to agree. She decides to name him Fluffy, but the cat introduces itself as Lupendon. She soon sets off back to the palace with Lupendon, who seems excited to be out after so long. Curious, Lucia asks it a series of questions, and Lupendon answers that it can only come out or go in on its master's orders. It assures her that it doesn't eat its own master. Lucia smiles and extends a hand, but Lupendon slaps it away. It remarks that she died and came back to life, startling her. It reveals that sometimes souls aren't completely attached to their bodies when they are born. In such cases, they die young, but she seems to be doing just fine, meaning she reincarnated. Lupendon advises her to be careful, or she'll die if her soul stays detached like this. Meanwhile, Eric stares at the Lupendon necklace replica. He has realized Swan's plan. He knows the necklace is capable of showing one's deepest, darkest desires or becoming their shield. He thinks it might not be awful if Lucia's true self is revealed. Suddenly, a voice pops up, asking him not to act innocent, and reminding him that the date is drawing near again, the day he cut off his head and took the throne. Eric asks him to stop, but the voice snickers and says he might always be nine-year-old Harry to him. He blames Eric for feigning indifference despite being interested in the throne. The voice continues tormenting Eric, and he asks him to show up as a rotting corpse instead. The eerie voice asks him to wait and disappears instantly. Meanwhile, Lucia felt sad to think she would die yet again. As she eats her meal, she spots Eric outside. He also notices her and requests to sit beside her for a while. Eric says nothing, making the atmosphere awkward. Eric notices her staring and turns to see her, causing her heart to pound loudly. She begins telling him about her new recipe, but he doesn't like it. She notices his unusual mood and asks if something has happened. He tells her that he was taught that showing emotions is a sign of weakness. Lucia felt sympathetic and advised him not to wait for his happiness to come to him but rather to find it himself. She rambles on, which he intently listens to, as he eats and drinks rose wine. He wonders whether to keep Lucia by his side since she keeps his mind at ease. The next day, Lucia can't help but think about Eric and hopes to run into him again soon. She comes across the history of the Empire book and decides to teach Alvis this. She notices how Alvis seems to have a lot on his mind, knowing it must be because of his parents' approaching death anniversary. All of a sudden, Alvis reveals that many things happened at the palace when the current emperor was still the second prince. A baby died not long after it was born and one could hear the screams of maids being murdered all night. The floors were stained with blood, and someone started a rumor about the palace being cursed. The queen said it was all because of the second prince. An oracle told her that the curse would only be lifted if he was sent far away, so the king sent him off to war. He was only a boy back then, so sending him to war was essential to sending him to his death. As they dragged him away, he screamed that he would never forgive them and he eventually got his revenge. He survived the war, killed his parents, and ascended the throne. But since the only witnesses from that day refused to speak, nobody knows the truth. He asks if she believes the rumors, to which she states that the emperor is incredible for strengthening his power without showing himself. She then ends the lecture. Meanwhile, the eerie voice approaches Eric again, asking if he enjoyed the blood of those he killed. More and more questions engulf him, making him gasp, and he picks up his sword. The scene shifts to Lucia talking to Jace when, all of a sudden, a maid begins to fall. But Jace steadies her quickly, making Lucia wonder whether he's normal. She pokes his eyes and realizes she was being paranoid. She follows the suspicious maid but ends up getting lost. She ends up in a garden and finds a man. 
he coldly asks her who gave her permission to enter his garden, making her realize he's the emperor. She apologizes and tries to run away, but he grabs her and asks how wasn't she driven mad by the necklace of truth. He has been having nightmares ever since he had them, but they all go away when she's nearby. He is cut off from his thoughts as Lucia apologizes to him, not daring to open her eyes. Knowing he wants her to stay by his side, he kisses her. However, she hurries away, making him smile, and he remarks that she tastes like rose-flavored candy. Lucia hurries back to her room and anxiously wonders why he tried to kiss her. The scene shifts to the return of Damien. He goes to meet Alvis, who excitedly hugs him. Alvis shows him the flowers he crafted to plant near the graves. He is then summoned to the Emperor. As they talk, Damien notices how different he seems and points it out. He then points out that he's been visiting the Rose Palace often, and could it be that a young lady caught his attention? Seeing him smile shocks Damien even more. Meanwhile, Lucia tries to wake up Lupendon, making him grumble angrily. Upon asking, Lupendon reveals his main duty is to protect whoever wears the necklace. It has only guarded one person, and that was the first Empress, Alina. Later, Lupendon notices how Lucia's trying hard to keep herself busy to avoid fearing death. It calls her a fool, saying she must try saving herself. Realizing that she can save her life gives her hope. However, when Lupendon suggests she start a family, her hopes diminish. As she cooks, Eric approaches them, and she gives him some grilled meat. He smiles, praising her cooking skills. She then asks for a favor and says she wants to sell her rose-based foods outside the palace, eventually opening up a store for her servants. He then asks why she cares about them so much. She says it's what her heart is telling her to do. They then chat away happily. Meanwhile, Jace is guarding the west gate as usual when suddenly he senses a feeling, the kind he had right before the last ogre attack. He excuses himself and climbs the wall, asking the presence to show itself. On the other hand, Swan and her friend are confused as to why their plan never worked. Swan knew the necklace was real, and she had done as her grandfather ordered her to. They then decide to ask Spooky. Lucia is soon informed that Spooky is getting beaten and rushes to her, but is stopped by Eric. Nonetheless, Lucia stops Swan and confronts her for being violent. As she begins to leave, Swan asks her to have some class, despite how pitiful her family is. Lucia halts, rummages through the basket, and throws mud at Swan. She then cuts off her hair, infuriating her. She begins to attack Lucia but is stopped by Eric. Swan blames him for taking Lucia's side every time and asks if he likes her. She smirks, saying what his majesty will think, which Eric calmly deals with and leads Lucia away. Swan turns to her friend Rachel and asks her to spread a rumor in return for becoming the Empress. After taking care of Spooky, Lucia takes a stroll outside and bumps into Damien. Damien asks her who's stirring things up in the Rose Palace, to which she says it must be Swan or Isla. Surprised that Eric isn't interested in one but two women makes him excited. Meanwhile, Jace finds out it was Lucia's tiger who called him here. Lupendon reveals its identity and plans to make Jace his lackey. Jace rejects the proposal and begins to leave. But Lupendon declares he's going to kill him since he's been seen, making him stop. Jace smirks, saying he'd like to see it tried. Later, Jace lies on the bed with his body aching and unable to believe he lost a baby animal. Plus, he has to be its errand boy. He is then soon told the servant girl he was after was beaten up and might get kicked out. As Lucia talks to the doctor about Spooky's health, she spots a pale-looking Jace, whom she also gets treated by the doctor. On the other hand, Alvis shows how he decorated his mother's grave with flowers for Damien. Damien later ponders whether to see Swan and Isla by himself. He spots Swan but finds it surprising to see her hair all cut off. Later, Halo informs him what really happened. Damien knows Swan will want revenge and asks where he can find Lucia. Halo reveals she's teaching Alvis right now, surprising him even more. He arrives at the door and peeks through to find Alvis cooking, and he recognizes Lucia as the woman who told him to look for Swan and Isla. Hearing Alvis say he will feed what he eats to people outside the palace, Damien enters and reminds him he's the second prince. He then suggests going with them after taking his majesty's opinion. Later on, Eric holds a meeting with Damien and Walter, busy thinking of becoming Lucia's special someone, like her maids are for her. He then orders his knights to prepare a shop in the capital. Meanwhile, Alvis wonders what's taking Damien so long, and he becomes glum. He confesses to Lucia that he misses his mother, to which she advises him to think of someone else who's important to him and give the pudding he prepared to them. And so he takes the advice and presents it to Eric, saying he will make a lot and give it to people in need. He asks for permission to go, which Eric reluctantly gives, saying he will send the most trustworthy person with them. 
And so Alvis and Lucia prepare to leave the palace but are surprised to see that the trustworthy escort is none other than the Emperor himself. Eric reveals that he also came for the shop's opening purpose, which excited Lucia. They soon arrive at the capital, and Lucia is amazed to see how the bustling streets look like a play. The carriage hits a rock, and she loses her balance. Eric steadies her, making them both flustered. They exit, and Jace announces free food for the civilians. Eric and Lucia watch a rather focused Alvis work, and they share mixed reviews. For Eric, one loaf of bread cannot solve the problem, but for Lucia, it turns into a sign of hope. He then reveals to her that his majesty has granted permission to open her shop. She then offers him a candy she made, making things awkward. She confesses that he seems to be in a bad mood and is only trying to lighten things up. Eric grabs her hand and says he isn't in a bad mood, but he just doesn't like sweets. He then leads her to the building chosen for opening her shop, and Lucia is awestruck to see how huge and nice it is. She smiles and thanks him, making Eric blush. Meanwhile, Lupindin orders Jace to find out about the rumors going around these days. As Lucia inspects the store with Alvis, a knight enters hurriedly, whispers something to Alvis, and says they must go the right way. And so Eric and Alvis leave for the palace immediately, leaving Lucia in Jace's care. Jace reveals that a rumor has been going around that Lord Chamberlain has fallen in love with a woman at Rose Palace. Back at the palace, Eric is informed that a group of aristocrats led by Count Tagon are trying to find out whether the rumor is true. Count Tagon was a supporter of the first prince, whom Jace killed, but after staying quiet for so long, what move is he making? He orders a meeting to be held, saying he has an idea. And so the meeting soon begins, with the emperor hiding behind a veil. He reveals the meeting's discussion to be about the Marshal Estate, surprising Count Tagon, who thought it would be to address the rumors. The Marshal Estate is run by a Marquis who's notoriously disloyal to the Emperor. Eric orders food and water to be sent there, shocking everyone. He then orders portraits of ladies from the Rose Palace to be made and brought to him. Meanwhile, Swan's grandfather scolds her for starting the rumor, saying everything could be ruined. She spots Isla and Lucia behind a pillar, who have heard everything. But to Lucia's surprise, Swan confidently admits her crimes and begins to slap Lucia. But Lucia avoids it. The scene shifts to Lucia having her portrait made. It turns out that servants had to intervene to make Swan and Lucia stop fighting back. Eric thinks of how unpredictable she is at times, and he asks why they fought. Lucia, teary-eyed, revealed that Swan started the rumor. He asks her not to worry as he will take care of it and teases her for fighting violently. Flustered, she tries counting monkeys in her head to calm herself. In that instance, the artist asks how he wants her to be drawn, to which she blurts out, monkey. And so she is stunned to find her portrait later on, in which she looks like a monkey. She thinks of what the emperor must look like and realizes that he looks similar to Prince Alvis. But she shrugs it off, remembering how Serena said Eric might be a distant relative of the imperial family. Meanwhile, Eric feels glad to have made another exclusive monkey portrait of Lucia. On the other hand, Jace senses something wrong and goes out to see what it is. While hearing Spooky awake, Lucia happily enters the room to see her but finds Lupendon jumping off the balcony. The monster was once again headed to the Rose Palace, the wing where Lucia was staying. He can't let anything happen to her and wishes for her to be safe. He swings by her room and finds an ogre killing a maid. He orders his knights to find Lucia instantly. Meanwhile, Lucia refuses to leave without Spooky. She goes to find other servants but finds an ogre in her way. Jace comes to her rescue and kills her. When she goes to find her servants in the dining hall, she comes across Eric. She notices his hair shining gold for a moment but shrugs it off. Eric then reveals that her rose candies are unfortunately ruined. He remarks that they were too sweet for him, but he enjoyed the rose flavor. A sudden realization dawns on Lucia. She never gave rose candies to anyone, not even Eric, except for the time she accidentally pushed one into the Emperor's mouth while kissing him. She asks Eric to tell the Emperor she wishes she'd hugged him goodbye that day, causing him to become shocked. He grabs her, knowing he's the only one who can make her bloom. Meanwhile, Lupendon faces the mysterious shadow, noticing his throat has been cut. Upon interrogating the figure, it reveals that it has found what it was looking for and takes its leave. Meanwhile, Eric agrees to relay Lucia's message but asks her not to expect an answer and leaves. If he was really the Emperor, Lucia knew things could never go back to the way they were before. On the other hand, Eric knew she had it all figured out. His attention is diverted as Felix presents a report of the attacks. It turns out that five ogres and three trolls were captured. There have been 47 casualties and 100 injured. Just then, Walter rushes in, announcing they found a monster body in the forest. They found that the monsters had been coming in from a secret tunnel connected to the forest outside. 
On the other hand, Lucia decides to hold a funeral for her deceased maid, Lua. She meets Count Jarnus' daughter, Trudy, there, who also wishes to hold a funeral but isn't allowed to, unlike her. Lucia expected her to be like Swan since she was high-born, but it wasn't like that. Trudy reveals that she came to the Rose Palace because she fell in love with the Emperor and wanted to marry him. Meanwhile, Swan confronts Eric about investigating her, but he ignores her. A shadow lurks around her, advising her to do what she did again. The scene switches to Eric waiting for Lucia. He spots Jace with his arm tied by Lucia's dress and can't believe how kind she is, even to mere servants and soldiers, but isn't interested in the Emperor. He wonders whether everything will change if he reveals his true identity to her. Lucia approaches him and suggests putting aside their own problems to help Lua and others first. Eric asks why she has been talking about servants ever since they met today. She reveals that she is concerned about Lua. Eric then asks how she suspected him of being the Emperor, to which she says he knew about the candy. Apart from that, there are other things as well. Eric asks if she knows why Rose Palace was built. He explains how the palace became a place for the nobles to marry their daughters to gain power. In turn, the Emperor used their daughters to control their greed. He had no interest in the ladies but only entered the palace on two occasions, when someone died or attempted suicide. He then reveals his true identity and confesses his feelings for her. He insists that being his emperor doesn't change anything, but Lucia can't help but pull herself away indifferently. He then says things can't return to what they were and that they must move forward. He then suggests that she be his wife, shocking her. He confesses that he enjoyed his time with her, and Lucia confesses that she finds it scary now to even meet his eyes. She knows she enjoyed spending time with him, but after knowing he's the infamous emperor, she doesn't know what to do anymore. She remarks that he might be different as the emperor from the Eric she knows. He confesses that he likes her so much that he's willing to change everything he had planned and asks her to think it over. Eric is later informed that they're in trouble as Marshall's soldiers are advancing towards the capital prepared for a rebellion in three days. Later, as Lucia loads her rose wine bottles for the store, Eric arrives and demands to buy some. They soon get to talking, making Lucia feel awkward. He asks why she rejected his offer and reminds her that his power will become hers, but she says she doesn't need any of it. He then asks if it's because of his face, which she denies as well. She raises a question as to why he wants her to become the Empress and announces her leave. Before leaving, Eric asks her to give him three days and he'll have everything back the way it was. Lucia kept thinking back on her past encounters with Eric and couldn't help but feel embarrassed, which distracted her from her duties. Later, she meets with Eric and decides to confess her feelings for him now and not make him wait for three days. She confesses that at the end of the day, He's still Eric, and no matter what his title is, he's just himself, making him smile fondly. Just then, a messenger informs them that Isla has collapsed after drinking poison. Lucia knew someone must be behind this and began reading Lucia's diary to find answers. She reads the warning again, wondering what it meant. It is revealed that Isla last had tea with Swan. Lucia finds a dried rose petal on the last page of her diary and deciphers the truth. Someone tried to poison her using roses. She then asks Serena to look into who else, besides her, cooks with roses. Meanwhile, Eric meets Swan to confront her about the poisoning, but she refuses to discuss it and says he will soon vanish too. Suddenly, Eric could smell roses from Swan, who remarks she won't kill him if he takes a long rest. She then wields her sword at him and stabs him. Eric manages to throw the sword away but is injured. He asks Felix to come out and orders him to leave Swan out here, as she's bound for a fate worse than death. He gets his wound treated and prepares to deal with the Marquis soldiers, remarking that his days as Lord Chamberlain are over. The scene shifts to Lucia having tea with Trudy. Serena rushes to her and informs her that Lord Chamberlain was attacked and is now unconscious. She further relays the Emperor's message to gather all the ladies in front of the inner castle's main gate. They soon gathered there. Swan smirks, knowing the poison had worked on him and that it's only a matter of time before she's declared the Empress. On the battlefield, the Marquis demands that the Emperor come out, and to everyone's surprise, he does. People are shocked to see that Lord Chamberlain has been the Emperor all along, including Swan. The Marquis asks why aid was sent to his land. Eric insists that his title and land will be taken away, and that he sent no aid, making the others wonder why he's lying. Realizing he's covering for him, the Marquis drops to his knees and begs for forgiveness for not recognizing his sincerity. He deems himself unworthy to bear the sword given to him by the late Emperor, putting a stop to the rebellion. Eric then announces that he will find an Empress within a year and arrests Swan for poisoning, asking her to take a nice long rest in prison. Swan finally reveals that she didn't poison Isla but was only present at the time she drank the tea. 
but she is still being dragged away. Eric then announces to Lucia that she should report to his bedroom tonight, shocking her. He later leads her to his room and shows her the portrait he has of her that isn't monkey-like. Eric confesses that he falls asleep after looking at her portrait, and expresses his desire to make her his wife. She decides to reveal her true identity to him. She explains how Lucia did die and that she is an imposter who woke up in her body, making Eric shocked. But he assures her it doesn't matter since he never met Lucia before she took the poison and that he likes her regardless of whose soul she has. But the bigger problem is that her soul hasn't completely settled in this body, and she reveals to Eric that she's dying. Later, she tells Lupendon how much the situation has changed. Ladies keep glaring at her, and Eric comes to meet him every day. Meanwhile, Damien is investigating Lupendon and arrives back at the palace after some time. Romeo reveals to him that someone made a deal with demons and summoned those monsters to attack the palace. On the other hand, Lucia isn't granted permission to leave the palace for her store by Eric. He confronts her for happily revealing she's dying and pleads with her not to give up yet. As an alternative, the customer's attendant is brought to the palace and places an order. Another attendant also arrives to place an order for his master, who has come to fancy a woman, saying his master is superior to the Marquess and therefore his order must be fulfilled first. Previously, a shadow had brought Lucia's lock of hair to Harry after realizing it was her they had been looking for all along. Now Lucia is confused as to whose orders she should fulfill. With Alvis and Eric's help, she decides to make rose-scented candles for Count Fermil's date. She assures Eric that she won't give up on life for both their sakes and kisses him on the head, asking him to wait for her. Later, Lucia arrives at Count Fermil's estate with Jace. They notice the atmosphere wasn't right. Lucia is brought to a waiting room, and the door shuts behind her. A voice remarks that he liked a woman who loved roses too. He approaches her and says it's nice to meet her, revealing himself to be Harry. This shocks Lucia to her core and he offers her a deal, she can go back to her previous life while he gets her body. He asks her to take the dagger and do what he tells her to in order to return, asking her to make sure nothing is holding her here if she wants to go back. Just then, Jace enters the room, causing Harry to disappear. Later, Lucia reveals what happened to Eric, who is equally surprised. She says there's no point in going back except for the fact that she feels bad for her mother and just doesn't know what to do. Eric asks what they call lovers in the world she came from, to which she says they call them a couple. He suggests they become one and assures her that he won't force her to choose, encouraging her to go back to the people she loves. He hugs her, asking her to leave him a memory of their love. They stayed up talking the night away. After she fell asleep, Eric knew he couldn't let her die. He kisses her awake the next day, making her cheeks redden. Meanwhile, Alvis watches them from the door, pissing Eric off. Alvis explains that he came looking for Lucia since she didn't come for the lecture. Damien also joins in on the fun, annoying Eric more. As Lucia has breakfast with Damien and Alvis, they reveal to her how a ball will be held, exciting her. At the Holy Temple, Eric meets with Father Benedict, demanding that he dig Harry's grave, which has been buried under this temple. But Benedict refuses to. Lupendon appears all of a sudden, suggesting that they do it. Father Benedict wishes for him to do as he pleases and notices how he has grown into a fine emperor despite sending him off to war years ago. Lupendon digs the grave up, but when Eric opens the coffin, he finds it empty. Later, Damien reveals to him that the symbol present on the coffin symbolizes the demon who grants humans a new body in exchange for their souls. Eric recalls how Harry did everything to get the throne but making a deal with a demon was too far. He suggests distracting him to buy some time. He asks Damien to proceed with the ball as part of the plan. Meanwhile, Lucia builds a cake for Eric. Trudy approaches her and apologizes in advance for pursuing the Emperor even though he loves Lucia. This makes Lucia chuckle and she calls her cute. Lucia hopes for Eric to find someone like Trudy if she doesn't escape death. It doesn't have to be her, but all she wants is for Eric to be loved deeply. She later presents the cake and other confectionaries to Eric who demands that he be fed by her. She then reveals to him about the real Lucia's diary and asks him to release the women like her who were forced to come here. But he refuses to do so until they know who poisoned the real Lucia. Later, all the ladies prepare for the ball, including a reluctant Lucia. She bumps into a lady who suggests having tea with her, reminding her not to keep the emperor all to himself. Through her insults, she reveals that it was she who came up with the idea of taking poison. She reveals they were talking about attracting the emperor's attention. While everyone took enough poison to attract attention, she went and nearly killed herself. Just then, Eric appears in the hallway and sees them fighting. He glares at Chloe, making her dash away. The day of the ball soon arrives, and Lucia's maids are mesmerized to see her looking beautiful. The Emperor soon arrived at the ball, 
and it began. While Lucia is busy eyeing him, her father approaches her and praises her for winning the Emperor's love. She finds out that it was he who gave Lucia so much poison in the first place, all for power. Adding to her rage, he advised her to take more if the Emperor started to grow distant. Eric overhears this and demands to know everything. Hearing him talk, she wondered what kind of life the real Lucia must have led. Eric leaves Romeo to inspect the ordeal. Romeo soon makes up a list of the people Marquis pointed out as possible culprits in poisoning Lucia. Eric then announced the proper punishment for the Marquis for committing murder. Lucia decides to take matters into her own hands and wonders who else was involved in the murder. She approaches Rachel, offering her a rose cake. She remarks that roses can be used for their fragrance but also as poison, making Rachel flinch. She then asks Rachel to tell her what she knows about who poisoned her. With further provocation, Rachel leads Lucia to a quiet place. She then asks what she will get in return for answering her questions. She then confesses she needs to become Empress, but Lucia says she doesn't have control over it. This makes Rachel angry, but Lucia decides to wait for Rachel to answer her on her own accord. Later, a woman approaches Rachel, confessing she wanted to shift the blame on her to get away with the poisonings. But now that she ended up tattling to Lucia, she has no choice but to kill her. Rachel clarifies that she never mentioned her name, but the woman kills her ruthlessly. While Lucia wanders away from the ball, she bumps into Eric. They decide to leave together. Suddenly, they hear a noise coming from the fountain outside, and Lucia remembers Rachel being there. Eric goes out to see what happened and finds Rachel's poisoned body. Lucia feels bad for leaving her alone and wonders what Rachel must know to get poisoned so easily. She recalls that only Swan and Rachel were present that day, and the third was Isla. Isla had picked up on saying she smelled like roses on their second tea time, and she smelled the same too. She asks Serena what she was doing the day she was poisoned. Serena reveals she met Chloe in the morning, and then Isla came by. Lucia realizes that the real Lucia knew Isla was going to poison her all along. She wastes no time and approaches Isla. She cuts to the chase and confronts her for murdering Rachel and poisoning herself to seek the Emperor's attention. But Isla smirks, saying she doesn't care about the Emperor. She smiles, saying she has no choice but to kill her now. However, Lucia presses on the heirloom bracelet Eric gave her two hours earlier for aid. A light shines out of it, and suddenly, a poison bottle smashes above Isla's head. She rushes to Harry for help and demands that he kill Lucia. Lucia realizes that the person Harry talked about is Isla, his beloved from when they were little. Harry refuses to kill Lucia since he needs her. Eric appears in the moment, asking him to keep her name out of his filthy mouth. Meanwhile, Isla decides to kill Lucia by herself, but before she can attack her, she gets stabbed by Harry. He then turns to Eric, saying it only seems like yesterday that he killed his father and his wife. He remarks that he'll never forget the fear of his little brother when he stabbed their beloved older brother. He then charges at Eric, saying he must kill him and take back the throne that is rightfully his. They begin fighting, and Harry finally loses his sword to Eric. He bids Eric farewell but promises to return as the day is almost here. He then turns to Lucia, reminding her of their deal, and vanishes. Suddenly, Lucia realizes what the deal really is. She had to stab Eric with that dagger to go back to her own world. She starts feeling dizzy and collapses. The scene shifts to a memory where Eric excitedly holds his younger brother while Harry watches from the door, wishing to hold him too, despite being from a different mother. He was abused by his brother in several instances until the day he stood victorious against him and ended up killing him. He revealed to Eric that he had no choice but to do this, as the only way to be appreciated was by becoming the Emperor. And so Eric had no choice but to ascend the throne after killing his brother. Lucia soon wakes up, and Eric gives her water. But she soon spews it all out as he mentions that he changed her clothes. He cheekily clarified that he was kidding. Lucia asks about Harry and Isla, to which Eric shifts the topic, saying what's more important is that he's here with her. Later, Romeo reports how Isla has admitted her sins and chosen execution as retribution for her crimes, shocking her father, the Viscount. He then announces that he will make Lucia the Empress. Alvis excitedly conveys the happy news to a rather confused Lucia. Eric also arrives, and they decide to eat. Alvis excitedly asks Lucia to sit beside him, to which Eric questions if he's the one marrying her. Eric tells Lucia that he will explain the news later, and they continue having their meal. She is overwhelmed to hear the news and reminds Eric that she will return to her world soon. 
but Eric insists that she spend her remaining days by his side, wanting her to live in his memory as his wife. Later, as a tailor fits Lucia's dress, she wonders what to do. She ends up deciding to agree for Eric's sake, despite not wanting to be an empress. Lucia agrees to accept his marriage proposal. Eric expresses that he's glad she's here with him, and just the thought of her being his bride makes her happy. He thanks her for agreeing to the marriage and kisses her, expressing his wish to make her happy every moment they are together. Meanwhile, Lupinden thinks of Eric as pathetic since he can't even ask her to stay. Its ears swiftly perked up. The wheels have been set in motion, and everything stopped while the Empress made up her mind. But now that she's opened her heart to the Emperor, it's all moving again. She's the only one who's out of place in this world. Whatever choice she makes, Lupendon hopes she doesn't regret it. That night, Lucia contemplates whether she made the right decision and wonders if she will be able to live without him. She reveals to Lupendon that she loves Eric but feels bad leaving him all alone. Lupendon states that she's lucky to have someone love her with all their heart and that she's just thinking too much. And if she's this upset, it suggests she stay with him. Lupendon says that she has people who love her in this world as well and advises her to follow her heart. She embraces him and asks if he wants her to stay. Felix overhears this and decides to leave her alone since she has a lot on her plate. He is startled to see the emperor behind him and apologizes. Eric wanted to beg on his knees for her to stay, but he could do nothing when he saw her smile. He knows it's selfish of him, but Felix reveals that it must be because he's frightening like a tiger, and even he wouldn't want to marry someone known to be a war ghost. On the other hand, Harry's body is slowly rotting away. He knows the day is getting nearer, when the moon soaks through the light, everything will change and he will be reborn. Meanwhile, Lucia requests a normal date with Eric, and he agrees. They soon go out to eat. She smiles, saying she will always treasure the memory of this moment spent with the man she loves, and Eric could not agree more with her. As they wander through the market, they spot a girl they saw before at the Rose Perfume Shop being kidnapped. They decided to help her. Walter and Eric approach the kidnappers, while Romeo is assigned to protect Lucia. She asks how Turdy is doing, to which he reveals that she's turning back to the Turdy he knows and is busy practicing swordsmanship. He then reveals that he is happy to finally get a chance to talk to her. But she knows he's always hanging around the palace. She realizes something and asks if he set this up on purpose. But Romeo asks her not to misunderstand and confesses that she might be the only person to whom Eric opens up. This makes her wonder what will happen after she leaves. Walter and Eric soon return with the lady, who thanks Lucia for saving her. She asks if disowning her parents for someone she loves is really worth it. To this, the girl replies that if she had lived happily, she is sure her parents would have come to respect her choice. Hearing this, Lucia decides not to leave Eric for her own happiness. They soon return to the palace. As Eric leaves, he reveals that he has a surprise for her tomorrow. Later, Lucia decides to write him a letter, telling him how she feels since she has decided to stay. But it seemed difficult to write a love letter since she had never written one before. Suddenly, an eerie mist surrounded her, and a voice asked if she wanted help writing a letter to his brother. The voice then reveals that Eric killed everyone who got close to him, but Lucia pays no heed to his words. Harry further reveals that it is funny to see Eric getting eaten up by the guilt of killing him because he's his brother, despite him being the one who killed their parents. Lucia claims Eric is way better than him and starts getting on his nerves. Soon, Eric arrived with the knights, but Harry had locked the door. Lucia knows this is a trap and tries to leave. She asks Eric not to come in but gets interrupted as Harry asks her to do as he says so she can get reunited with her family and Eric. Eric is informed a herd of monsters is approaching the castle, and he orders to kill them. He decides to go in alone and asks Halo to gather all the nobles. However, he is stopped by Lupendon, who asks him to wait a little longer. Meanwhile, Lucia felt breathless and her body seemed to be possessed. Harry has plotted to make Lucia stab Eric in the heart so he can take his body. He hands her the dagger and asks her to stab Eric with it. The red moon soon rises and it's time for his revenge plan to begin. Meanwhile, Eric rushes in and begins attacking Harry. Harry remarks that killing his brother twice is cruel. Eric remarks that if he wanted to become the Emperor, he should have just told him to. Harry then reveals to Eric that he's controlling Lucia's mind and that she wants to kill him and return to her world. Lucia then begins to wield her dagger at Eric, who desperately tries to wake her up, but to no avail. Harry then orders her to stab him. Eric opens his arms for her and confesses that meeting her was the best thing that ever happened to him. He thanks her for all the memories and asks her to forget everything when she returns. He says goodbye to her, confessing that he loves her. Nevertheless, Lucia stabs him in the arm. Tears stream down Lucia's cheeks as she woke up. She asks why he's trying to give up and letting his brother walk all over him. 
She assures him that he deserves to be happy and can be selfish for his happiness at times. She says it isn't his fight anymore and faces Harry. She then calls for Lupin in to help her. He soon appears and faces the carrier of Imperial Eurasian blood. But Harry is certain to absorb all the energy as the full moon rises. However, Lupin Din reveals that he wasn't the only one who was waiting for the full moon. He reveals that he absorbed the energy of the moon and entered Lucia's body, shocking Harry. He turns to Lucia and asks how she could use all that power, angering Eric. Lucia remarks that Eric may have gone easy on him, but she won't. She says goodbye to him and stabs him. Previously, Lupendon had revealed to Lucia that the only way to defeat Harry was to stab him with the energy of the moon dipped in the blood of a living member of the Imperial family since Harry gave his blood to the demon when making a deal. Harry pleads to not let him die like this, as he has to become the Emperor. He asks Eric to save him, but he does nothing. Eric reveals that he never hated him, even after he killed their parents and took all the blame for what he did. He was labeled as the prince who killed the Emperor and Empress just to ascend the throne. After that, he was plagued with nightmares due to the overwhelming guilt he felt for taking his brother's life. He could only breathe after putting on the mask of Lord Chamberlain. From the moment he became Emperor, he could only think about Harry. He apologizes for being unable to help him when he is in pain, making Harry speechless. He apologizes and collapses to his death. Lucia then approaches Eric, who assures her he's fine now. He is soon tended to and sighs disappointed that their wedding is going to be postponed because of this. Lucia smiles, saying it's only for two days and she isn't going anywhere. She remembers the letter she wrote for him and reads it out to him about how much she loves him. Hearing this touched Eric, Lucia further states that she doesn't think she has told him she loves him. It doesn't matter in which realm he is anymore, as she and he were destined to meet each other. Eric then reveals he needs to give her something as well. He presents her with a box filled with dolls of them. He takes out a ring as a token, promising her that he'll make her happy for the rest of her life. He embraces her, pleading with her to stay with him forever. He then serves her a dessert that he created especially for her. She praises his cooking and decides to sell it to the Rose Perfume Company as well. The scene shifts to the wedding day. Lucia approaches the aisle with the help of Eric. She smiles and calls him handsome. She promises to live happily ever after with him. Eric agrees, hoping to make her happy. The Empress' esteemed guardian stood next to the Emperor, and the name of the Empire was renowned from that day forth. The couple is soon pronounced husband and wife as they exchange their vows. 